Hey, how you doing? This is John, and welcome to John's Long Box. Today we're looking at how to draw comics the Marvel way by Stan Lee and John Buscema. Look at this cover. Now, this was a series of, of hard hardcover. Well, you could get it soft cover, but it was a hardcover uh, book by uh, Simon and Schuster, I think it was. So, as I keep saying, it's kind of said that Stan Lee, in some senses, was a little bit embarrassed by comic books. He said that at parties, he'd go to parties and people like, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer. He's like, I, I, I made comic books. So he got a little embarrassed. It took him a long, long time to, to get over his embarrassment. I'm sure the million dollars a year uh, retirement package that he got uh, kind of helped. But uh, one of the things he did, he was always experimenting. You gotta love Stan Lee for always experimenting. He elevated the medium as far as increasing the writing and the quality. He, uh, he, uh, he got mag he got magazines published to get the wider distribution, and then he got comic books in bookstores, which sounds like oh a big deal, but it wasn't for a long time. And that's one of the things that he did with this with this hardcover line. This one I never got. I had most of these like Origins, Son of Origins, Bring on the Bad Guys, Women of Marvel, but I never had this one. So this is actually the first time I've ever had this, and uh, I read it the other day, and then I, I used it to try to draw it. If you remember me, I said that. Uh, as a kid, I was always drawing comics and everything. And my, my my mother, bless her heart, she was doing the best. She met Mike Carlin, uh, an editor. He was a he was a Batman editor at the time, I think it was, and uh, she met him at a wedding. She he, Mike Carlin married somebody that was friends with my mother, or well, mother's whatever, whatever. She met Mike Carlin. She goes, "Oh, my son wants to draw a comic book." I never wanted to draw comic books. I, I like to draw, but I always wanted to write comic books. So bless her heart. So Mike Carlin was nice to my mom. He's like, "Oh, you yeah, tell him to send the portfolio over." And then my mom's like, "Yeah, no, I'm like, mom, I can't draw." <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but she, she, bless her heart, she was helping me out. So let's look at this. So now I'm going to use this book to uh to help me draw. So I I use this book to help me draw. It's at the back. So there's a monster at the end of this book. Like that. See, we have like a little write-up over here. Now, I want to... Okay, so I got this first, number one, first, very good. Now, does that mean first printing? Number one, first, I don't know. Oh, I don't know because I thought it said first printing, but this is the 10th printing. This is how you can tell the printings. I don't really particularly care because... Uh, I, I just wanted to copy the book. So here's the dedications. Here's Stan and John. And this is a thick book, so I'm probably going to go by at lightning speed. Here's the table of contents. Preface right by Stan Lee. I, I read all of this. It was his, his nice little drawing. Tools of the trade. This I actually appreciated. This tells you all the tools of the trade. Tools of the trade. Again, I'm going to go find go by quick probably going to spend the longest on this page than any other page in the book but this is all the terms of a comic book so i i like this because of uh it'll help me with this channel so the first page of a story with a large introductory illustration is called the splash page so there's a splash page okay letters drawn and outlined with space for color to be added are called open letters so there's open letters that is great i never do that copy which relates to a title is called a blurb so this is a blurb okay the name of the story, of course, is the, is the title. An outline around lettering done in this jagged shape is called splash balloons. So uh, these are splash balloons. Okay, I, I never knew that. Uh, a single illustration on a page is called a panel. The space between panels is called a gutter I talked about. You won't be just no, uh, surprised to know that that is a sound effect. So they're talking about that over there. Thought balloons. Uh, the bubbles that connect the thought balloons, dialogue balloons, the, the arrows are called pointers, like, like that little arrow on that to show who's speaking. Uh, words in balloons which are lettered heavier than other words are called bold words or bold lettering. My favorite part, the credits. And here's the one, because I've been saying this, the little technical stuff showing who publishes the mag and when, where, usually found at the bottom of the first page is the indicia, pronounced indicia. So I've been saying it right. That's good copy which someone is talking to a reader but not with the dialogue it's called a caption so this is called a caption the, uh where else is there a cap up here is called a cap and captions kind of went out by way of the dinosaur so let's let's look at this so he's just talking about uh facing right along close-ups mid shots far away points uh this is worm's eye view bird's eye view um oh i've equal and then chapter two the secrets of making an object look real 
again, I'm going pretty quick, and I'm sure you can understand. It's a big old book. So he's talking about if, if you reduce everything to spheres, cubes, and cylinders, and think of cubes and cylinders, and don't forget to add the lines to make them look deep. It'll help you in drawing everything. So like... A, gu a gun is basically a box with a couple of cylinders. A gun, a car is a, is a couple of cubes and the wheels are cylinders. A, a plane is obviously a cylinder. And now we get to the body shape. So it's just, you know, here's cylinders and cubes. The head is, is, is this cylinder shape. Boxes and cubes. There we go. Iron Man's over there pointing to that thing. And then, you know, look at this. Break it down into cylinders and cubes. I, I never did. I always just drew, drew freehand. And again, I'm terrible. So maybe I should listen to John B. Seaman. The guy's a legend. Talking about this. Chapter 3, perspective. This I really enjoyed. This chapter is really good. So this is perspective. So they're talking about how this is one point perspective. Because there's one vanishing point. This is two point perspective. Two point perspective at, at eye level. Two, you know, raised lower. This is fascinating to me. I, and I could never do this stuff. I could never do this stuff. Here's two, uh, one point perspective over here, two points over here. This is three point perspective. So it goes this way, it goes this way, and it goes to the top. We got Spider-Man over here. Like, this is just amazing. To me, this is like magic. And I like this, how to draw a room, we draw, put everything, make sure everything matches with the perspective. And then this chair is slightly askew because no chairs are, are exactly, this is how to draw tires cubes how to divide things into halves so it looks right pleasing to the eyes just so cool and again i'm going quick guys this is not supposed to be a drawing lesson this is just me checking out this book all right that's a great drawing of captain america let's study the figure shall we shall we draw the figure okay so we got reed richards over here uh i, I like what he says uh the average person is six heads tall but we make our heroes uh what would he say we draw, he's, let's start with the average Joe. Like you, most average guys are about six and a half heads tall. But look at the sketch. Reed Richards, notice that he's eight and three quarters head tall. If we draw a hero, he's got to look like a hero. He should be heroic proportions. Unfortunately, that almost six and a half half tall proportions would make him seem somewhat dumpy when drawing on Marvel Mag. So they're already saying, you got to draw them in heroic portions. Needless to say, we make the shoulders good and wide and the hips really narrow. Naturally, as we start to see, the male is drawn much more angular than the female. Another, uh, elbow, okay, the elbow's full. Just, so, you know, you got to make them look heroic. And here, here we got Invisible Woman, okay? We'll go like that. Speaking of woman, where would Reed be? Okay, note that she's two, eight and three quarters heads tall with her hips much wider in relation to her shoulders. Obviously, we do not emphasize the, the muscles on the female, though we assume... She's not a weakling. A woman is drawn to look smooth and soft as opposed to muscular, angular rendition of a man. Also, we found that it's preferable to draw a female head slightly smaller than a man's. In fact, she's generally drawn somewhat smaller all over except the bosom. Boing, 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 boing. As a guide, you might remember that the head on both the men, okay, are always mid, mid length of the thigh. And here we go. Okay, this is just awesome. Okay, so this is just supposed to be the average human. And here's Captain America. The main note that the superhero is larger with broader shoulders, more muscular arms and legs, and a heavier chest, and even a more impressive stance. There's nothing weak looking about the fellow next to Captain America, but a superhero simply has to look more impressive, more dramatic, more imposing than the average guy. Most Perhaps the most important single point to remember is that you should always slightly exaggerate the heroic qualities of your hero and attempt to ignore or admit any negative undramatic qualities. What about the villains? So here is a realistic proportions and anatomy on a Doctor Doom and here is Marvel. Like the difference is somewhat subtle but the one above is the way Marvel would do it. It's important that you train your eyes to catch these elusive. So basically they say have his legs stand out farther, his, his, his arms up higher and, and more like, like that. You know that's normal. That's Marvel. And they say of course there's exceptions to the rule. Here's the thing who's only six heads tall and squatter. The kingpin you know he breaks the rules and then we got a nice drawing of thought let's draw the figure so this i like they're saying draw stick figures draw stick figures over and over again he says draw stick figures for a couple of months until you get used to posing them he says and then slowly fill in you know and this is something i never did i i might actually take this advice you know draw on the stick figures get the anatomy down you know get the poses down because even as a kid all my even my friends were saying like everything i drew there was the same three or four poses you know i love that and i was terrible at like foreshortening everything so the same 
the poses. This is Marvel. So this is just like all the poses. This is more everything else is just average and therefore not Marvel. I kind of like that. You know, and again, I'm not gonna read everything to you. I'm, I'm just gonna whip through the book. He says this is this is a regular stance, this is a marvel stance. Notice the wider legs. This is normal stance, this is a marvel stance. More sketching, more sketching, and then we, we've got Luke Cage over here. How to like fill it out until I love that awesome boink Spider-Man. And then they're talking about the, the choreograph the uh, the fight scenes. So where would we be without the action? And Okay, we got four short there. So here's how, like, this arm is drawn shorter than that arm because it's it's sticking out, making three. Th that I always found difficult. Like, like, like I know what I'm doing. Like everything was, you know, it wasn't difficult because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, it's it's only difficult when you have some talent. <laughs> if you don't have any talent, then uh, then uh, it ain't difficult because you just you just don't know what you don't know. And here we got chapter eight: drawing the human head. Okay, so he says draw a square and then draw this generic shape inside. Here's a front view. And then they've given you like little measurements of how to draw a human head. Like these lines where, where they are halfway through the square, blah, 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 the little triangle on the face. Okay, that looks like pretty much every Marvel face. And then, you know, he's showing you Reed Richards. They're showing you variations on that. Oh, did I skip... Uh, the women okay then you know once you know how to do the basic shape you, you can do all the monstrous and in, in, in human shapes and here we have a woman you know you start with the square you do the same thing here's the line draw the cheek he's telling you the nose is always upturned there's always a slight angle on the lips the, and the top lip is more full you know the bottom lip is more full than the top lip here's a front view and uh that's just such john you see my face huh I, like we all, I, I, I gotta say, like I know that woman from from the seventies in real life. You know, she looked, looked like a lot of women that I that I knew. And here he says, this is like a more villainous face. Is the, the subtleties? Here's a more motherly face. Just so good. How to draw the eyes? Shade the eyes. How to draw noses? He's like avoid the bow lips. There's always a little bit of, you know, but don't make it too extreme. Don't give her a big chin. You know more faces and then inked up faces chapter nine composition so uh this to me i thought was the least like start with a simple shape and put all your action there well i don't know that to me i guess that just proves i'm not an artist so I, I don't know what they're talking about here but to talk about how all the action is in this simple shape well I don't know. You can make those simple shapes after, after you draw the action. But I, I, I just, I'm admitting that I did not get the point of that chapter. And then they're talking about posing. Like here's a perfectly normal Doctor Strange walking into room, but here's a marvel way of him coming into the room. And they're absolutely right. Here's, you know, that's perfectly fine. J. Jonah Jameson getting mad, but here's the way Marvel would do it. More animation. And Stan, he, it says in here that Stan Lee said, watch silent movies. I thought that was excellent. Watch silent movies and see how they're overacting and overemphasizing. Because, uh, you know, it's not an action film. So here's like a page drawn adequately. You know, we got the monster. Look at them. They go on a fight. He's punching. You know, that's perfectly capable. You know, it's 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 adequate. But here's the Marvel way. The monster's over here. Look at Iron Man's like, he, and you already know the story. Iron Man's going, I'll take care of it. He's chomping out, blasting them energy everywhere. And look, they're absolutely right. Absolutely right. There's a big difference in the way they're drawn. So now this is just, you know, the same scenes drawn two different ways. So that, and then here's the Marvel way, the same scene, you know, close up over here, making the drama. Absolutely right. You know, Marvel, get get give this to all your artists working right now. You know, Stan Lee's gone. So I guess what they, they forgot, they forgot all of this stuff just awesome here's just uh, telling you about storytelling and making sure that the, you know, the action choreograph but i really did reading this the thing i really really enjoyed well you know one of the things i really enjoyed because i enjoyed a million things was uh and now we're doing covers was a uh, watch silent movies watch silent movies and see how they overact and that's what we got to draw i thought that was like you know i read comic books guys you 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 know I've been doing this for three years. I've been reading comic books for, geez, 
44 years more, 40, you know, almost 50 years. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to call it 50 years. I'm 54 years old. I, so maybe, you know, look at a comic book before I could read. So whatever. And I never noticed that. Look at old black and white movies, Buster Crabbe, Buster Keaton, you know, Lillian Gish, and just watch them overact. This was really cool. I really like this inking to the point where I, <laughs> a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. So I'm actually thinking of buying the, the, the pens and the inking stuff and just trying it. So here he's talking about, this is like perfectly inked and, uh, you know, the, the over, the overdue. So here, here is just overdone. So this is like the size of on the artist paper. This would be the size on the panel. So that's, this is how big it would be on the artist page. And this is the panel. I thought the inking chapter was awesome. To the point, like, like I said, a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. Now I think I can ink. And here is under inked, you know, so, uh, if, if, if I can hurt somebody's feelings, uh, I'm not going to mention names, but, I, I corresponded with one of my subscribers and I, and I bought one of their comic books and uh, I didn't particularly like it. And I'm going to say this because this is what it reminded me of. You, uh, you know who you, you are and I don't want to mention names because I'm not here to hurt anybody's feelings. But uh, it was under inked. So everything just looked like this. You know, I couldn't differentiate between patterns on the wall and, and, and patterns that was, you know, I couldn't tell if it was 3D or not. Okay. It was under inked. I didn't have, the, I didn't have the, uh, mental know-how to explain that okay so here we got a just you know the way light source is in in a panel you know where, where does the light come how to ink and I, just just excellent excellent stuff and again a little bit of knowledge is dangerous because now i think i know how to ink because i know i can't draw and i've always said oh yeah i could ink and here's the bibliography okay so i'm gonna close the book and that's the back cover and now i'm gonna show you what I did, I took all the lessons very seriously and I tried, okay? I used everything in the book to draw. And ready? Get set. Ta-da!